I've been busy working all night And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it right They know what I'm living like I've been busy going all out well, good morning, everybody. Off day, gonna head to the gym. Um, before I do, I was looking through the comments a little bit. Some of y'all are just assholes, like straight up assholes. Uh, especially when, in regards to Marissa, right? Like you obviously don't know or you've seen little snippets and things like that. But, uh, you know, like the whole comments of like, oh, gold digger, all this kind of stuff. It's like pretty offensive. She handles it really well. She kind of laughs it off. but. I felt like I should go to bat for her because she is like the most opposite of a gold digger of basically every woman. I mean, I know since my ex-wife, which we'll get to in a second. Um, anytime I've ever asked Marissa to buy her something, to give her something, she never wants it. Like it's been a couple years now and like there's never been a request. And every time I've offered, hey, let me do this. No, she like, she's so hesitant and so, um, and she doesn't, she's never felt deserve it of stuff like that you know that's that's a different type of conversation in terms of like why it's been so hard for her to ever receive gifts that I even try to offer her and as far as like gold diggers go I've lived in Vegas for 20 years and I've got a pretty good eye for, for what the, what they're all about and I did get married once right I got married and I was like oh man prenup prenup I got, I got a funny story about the prenup thing all right I'm gonna tell it <laughs> Brian's man I like this but it's true so my agent Brian he had like this tonsil thing come out he had something done to his throat so he wasn't a doctor they said you're not allowed to speak for a week right and so I let him know via a text you know I said I'm gonna get married I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm getting married to Lori at the time and uh, he called me right and he wasn't allowed to speak and I heard him through the phone just going uh, prenup prenup <laughs> He was vehement that I got a prenup. And I said, no, 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 we're not doing prenup. We don't set ourselves up fair like that. But um, ultimately, you know, Lori and I did get divorced. We did not have a prenup. We all, when we did get divorced, we had no lawyers. She was not the gold digger type and neither is Marissa. Um, you know, it, it is possible guys that, you know, she actually loves me because I'm a pretty freaking awesome dude. You ever think of that, huh? So anyway, plan for today is to sweat um, Tanya, and Richard from the couch a little bit. We do have a championship soccer game tonight at the other joint, the Longevity Sports Center. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, Christian said he wasn't feeling good this morning, so I'm gonna be in the gym solo, do a little, maybe some back and biceps or something like that. Marissa's also here. I got her a trainer, a really good trainer. I, she's a woman, she seemed good. I have, I used a trainer for years. And uh, you know, in the last year or so, I've kind of gone on my own solo and I really enjoy it. There's tons of programs available that you can find online. One of them I, I'm gonna do again next year that I did last year, it's called Shortcut to Size, followed by Shortcut to Shred by Jim Stepani. And this time I'm really gonna go for the size thing. So I'm gonna like balloon up a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna look to gain about 15, 20 pounds and then do the Shortcut to Shred, six weeks where you get rid of all the excess stuff. So that's kind of maybe gonna be a yearly plan where I think I'll start in October, November, December, because that's a three month thing, the Shortcut to size and then of course there's Bahamas in January for a couple weeks so we'll take that time off and then after that between January and the end of February I usually have a little bit of time at home so I got six weeks where I can do the shortcut shred so I think I'm gonna do that yearly and then mess with some other programs here and there if you got any really good suggestions you can leave those in the comments down okay, this remote will shut the TV off. Okay, but never had the other remote supposed to work the iPad one that's we've never even used to use that one yeah I know yeah, it's the iPad that's not shutting off the TV. Because that one won't work for the Apple TV. This is what happens when we have a problem with my TV. I'm bringing all the recruits. So funny. <laughs> I'm useless. My God. Fix a light bulb? Call Patty. <laughs> okay, Marissa. So people bug me all the time because they say, you know how you can tell somebody's a vegan? How? So don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been a vegan? I've been vegan for four years. Why? Maybe more. I think it was four years in February. How come? Um, well, I had a lot of digestive problems and I watched a documentary and had a friend tell me I should try it and I did and within three days like all of my all issues? of my digestive problems, my issues went away. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So me and Marissa right now are watching a documentary. I actually know the guys who 
um, I'll put this together. It's a, I think it's, I guess you call it continuation of a cowspiracy. It's called What the Health. Check it out on Netflix if you're bored. Um, might as well educate yourself. You may not choose to, you know, become a vegan, but it's always good to know it's out there, right, honey? Definitely. This yeah. documentary is really, really good yeah, so far. Good. A lot the of very, very animals we are killing, we're killing yeah. us yeah. and the world changing stuff. But so many people eat meat and dairy every day of their lives, and we are so concerned about getting enough protein. Do we have to eat meat to get complete protein? <laughs> you want me to jump off this bell and dunk you? Well, first of all, all protein is made by plants. I'll state that again for the record. All protein is initially made by plants. All of it. And it is not necessary to eat animal tissue in order to get protein. Only plants have the ability to actually take nitrogen from the air, break those molecules apart, and incorporate that nitrogen into amino acids and then make protein. Any protein you get from an animal is simply recycled plant protein. The elite athletes are utilizing vegan diets to heal injuries, speed recovery times, and enhance their performance. Before I was vegan, I was only bench pressing 315 like five times. And then after going vegan, I was doing 400, 425, 465. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm vegan and I'm bench pressing 465 pounds. This is ridiculous. And as soon as I went vegan, tendonitis started disappearing. My strength in my right arm started coming back. High blood pressure was going down. You, you can't be strong and be dying on the inside. That's not strong. That's weak. That's really weak because you, know, you look big and strong on the outside. You're a big man. No, but your heart is Gandhari. Tried to get a video of uh, Marissa over there in the corner working out. She, she grabbed my phone, clicked delete. She's not a fan of being viewed while she's like uh, working out. So I had, it was gonna be fun too. I snuck up on her and everything. Oh well, she's ruining my fun. All the kids playing. You like that? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> How was your workout, babe? It was really good. Yeah? We did a leg day. Uh huh. Crushed it. So how come you wouldn't let me use that clip of you doing legs? It looks good. Because I don't like being snuck up on like that. It's really she funny. was still teaching me how to do the exercise, so it, like I wasn't even doing it properly yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, you see what I did? I erased it for you. Yeah. 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 I made you. <laughs> your neck's still a little red. Is it? Yeah. Is that from the soccer ball? It's on this side. Right there. Well, there's something right there. I don't know what it is. No. Probably just scratched me. <laughs> Good view of the vision board here. Study. Meditate. Inspire. Make a difference. <laughs> I knew that he was going to be picking some finalists and I was anxious to see, I kind of thought I had a, a shot? I kind of thought maybe I had a shot because it was already featured okay. and there was a lot of features, that's bro. very true, I, you know that's probably in this whole process I never tried to get my hopes up, I, you know people would say oh you're, you're, you can do this, you got this and I'd be like well we'll see, I'm, that's just how I am, I'm not going to open myself up to that possibility until I know if it's true or not. Um, and then I sweat for, it, the video was out, the vlog was out way late the next day. Like it didn't come out until 6.30 and that was, we were about ready to leave for poker league and I refreshed my page and I was like, you guys, you guys, it's, it's here, it's here. So we all plopped down on the couch and I've got my phone and two people standing behind me, two here, we were, out and, and, and there, it, you know, he was like, and it's Tanya, and every one of us just screamed. And I was like, I can't, you guys, this is so insane. Thank <laughs> you. 
happened to have a hand the last three times I was in the big blind. It was like they saw this coming. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh my god! <laughs> You're gonna make TV, that's the consolation. Oh, we're gonna be on TV, guys. I know. I was playing with TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube people would go crazy if I say what I'm really thinking. Um, I want to hear what you're really thinking. <laughs> I really do. Well, I... Everyone kept saying, no, you're good, you're fine. I was feeling... When I was sitting at the table that my post-flop play was outclassed. Um, I had confidence and I know that people have, you know, I heard people say when I was in hands with them, what do you have? What could you have? Um, I know I have ability to take control of a pot. I know I have ability to fire out bluffs, but I'm not very good at reading people or putting, and that's not even true, but it's more of a gut thing. And so a lot of times when I would get bet at and I had absolutely air, I would fold. And then you'd see these other players who were going at war with air and air. And it's like, how? What are they thinking? Like, what must they know? And maybe that's a different level of play. But I don't find it to be very skillful. Or maybe it's really skillful and I just don't get it. Um, so I started the day with a decent amount of chips. I got coolered on a two outer when I had ace queen and the guy had tens and he was betting it for me, my ace on the flop and he ended up hitting a set which the board was really safe and I paid him off. So then it was tread water, paddle, 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 back up, build, 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 build. Um, and I did but the cost of playing kept going up. So I looked, you know, what's the next level? Okay, I want to have at least 60,000 by the next level. Built up to 47,000. Made a straight when another player made a flush. And I, again, I really knew right where I was at in the hand. I had called a raise, there was an ace on the flop. I knew neither of them had the ace. Um, it came turn river just what I wanted. He checked back his hand, which usually indicates that they have one, a, a non-suited hand. But he didn't, he had a suited hand. So I was down, played at least like five or six more rotations and every time the same guy raised my big blind. And he was short and he was looking for his places to make chips. I'm not going to defend my big blind with 9-4 off suit. So I would fold. One time I called and let out with air, and he folded. Um, he raised my big blind again. He raised my big blind again. He raised my big blind again. And I thought, I re-raise. I re-raised half my stack. He went all in. I kind of thought he was going to fold because he'd been pushing on me, and I didn't think he'd have anything. He had aces. All in all, it was a great experience. It made me see that I have a lot of stamina, that I have a lot of correct reads and
power at the table. And, you know, people are like, oh, it's a grind, you play 12 hours. Like, that didn't bother me at all. Um, just typical poker frustrations, but with more on the line. And so the blessing was that I didn't have to sweat that. Um, I just wish I could have done better for Daniel and me. <laughs> What I do for a living, that's a hard question. My, my kids think I have like 10 jobs and I don't know, I feel like I have about that many. Uh, I run and operate a bunch of different companies, but my primary focus is a business called Love Care and Dignity, also known as Abilicare. And we work with people with developmental disabilities and we're a service provider, a Medicaid service provider for 24 hour a day community services. So we work with people uh, in their homes, we work with them at a day hab that we have. We also do community services and we do employment services like job training and coaching and things like that. I don't really consider it a job, so when people ask me like, what do I do? Uh, you know, I, I certainly don't make any money at it. In fact, I have to pay to support the business because it's just not, it's, it's not only not for profit, it's, it's, it's not, a, yeah. So it's not really a job. You know, I, I consider it hanging out with people I'd hang out with anyway. So even though it's a company and we have uh, you know, 35 employees and, and we work with about 34 persons served. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's just more of a family than it is a company. Um, and, and, and it kind of works with my other job, I'm also a contractor and home builder and so I'm able to find like distressed properties and remodel them and make them, you know, really nice uh, for the clients to live in and they can rent rooms in it and it works out pretty well. Hey buddy, what's the, what's the update? Where are you at? Um, just went on dinner break. I'm coming back to the big blind. I can get another hand in fast enough. Uh, big blinds are 1,600, 800 small blind. I have six bakes is all. I'm uh, sandwiched between probably two of the chip leaders for the tournament for day two, about 450,000 and about 340,000. what I call dedicated cheerleader. Even after she said she's never coming to a soccer game again, we, got her, on, we got her on filming duties. And what's not going to happen today? I'm not going to get kicked in the face with the ball. <laughs> They didn't, they had extra subs. And... Rough one for the team here. Marissa's showing off the video from last night where she got kicked. We ran out of gas. We lost the man, five minute power play. Yeah, yeah. 
He was taunting us at he was taunting us at the end, playing dribble amongst himself. <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Couldn't win when we were man down. It's too tough. So, and plus we ran out of gas. Oh well. We're not gonna get a t-shirt, but it was a good sweat. What's she doing now? Huh? What are you showing them? Oh yeah, you got another video for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> All right, that's the end of soccer night. All right, so as promised, I uh, did my homework on tomorrow's table and I figured I'd give you guys a look at what the heck I do. And I've been doing this since I was in my early 20s. So I've mapped out the players, their names, their chip count at the table. I'm gonna add a little button to where I am just so I can visualize where small and big blind is. So, and then I've also got little notes on what I found on them. So for example, an X small means you've played extra small tournaments. Look at Warren up there, 22 total caches. We got up here Schultz, who's mostly small events, uh, several wins, 385K, also German, and that's relevant. I mean, it just is. So we've got the table here, interestingly, Mucker Zorowski, I got nothing on him. This might be his first event. So this is gonna help me tomorrow when deciding to make plays against who, who cares about the money, who's it big for, who's it not. And uh, I like to just do this to really feel like I'm connected. It's uh, about a little more than an hour before we bag chips and I busted the last level. Um, I opened shove queens and got called by the other short stack who had king queen and ended up with the flush on the river. Um, feeling really bad. Uh, whenever you don't win, it's like getting kicked in the gut. Um, you know, especially when you don't even cash. I really wanted to do well for, for Daniel and for everybody. and. Uh, I really felt like I left everybody down. And let nobody down, brother. I let everybody down. You let nobody down. I let everybody down. Just sucks. I really want to wish um, KL good luck. Um, I was able to sweat him the other day on day one. Um, and, and Daniel as well. Um, you guys are the only two horses for our Team Negrano left standing, so you got to Get them, guys. I know you can do it. Um, wish you the best of luck. Uh, it was earlier today I was able to meet with uh, Tanya, unfortunately, after she um, busted out. And um, you know, I felt really bad for her. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, but still, this has just you know, been such an amazing experience, and I'm so thankful. I want to thank you know, number one Daniel, of course, for giving us all this opportunity. I want to thank KL for coming by and, and meeting him. He's an inspiration and just a great guy. I want to thank Tanya and her husband, Ryan. Um, I want to thank the producer, uh, JT, who's been amazing through all this and kind of helped us along through the whole process. I want to thank Kathleen for all the love and support and for, um, uh, you know, watching the kids while I'm here, chasing the dream. Um, and I want to thank everybody back home uh, and, and all the clients uh, at LCD who, you know, gave up their support and were cheering for me. And uh, I appreciate it, everybody, and thanks again.